Suzanne Stevens, and I welcome you to Mecklenburg Matters. 2013 was quite a year for Mecklenburg County. It was our Sester Centennial. Hopefully you know now that that means we have been a county for 250 years, Sester Centennial. Let's take a look back at how we marked this very special year with our correspondent, Rosanna Sider. What a Sester Centennial celebration it's been. For our 250th birthday, we were there when the old courthouse reopened. It opened in 1928. It was designed by Lewis Asbury, who was the first native charlatan to ever become a professional architect. It is a magnificent building. It looks like what a courthouse ought to look like. It's a classical revival style building, and it really is such a grand presence in our community. We commemorated the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence at MECDEC Day. We shared Mecklenburg County's history through our Mecklenburg Minute video series, narrated by some truly notable names in our community. The 1950s and 60s were turbulent times in Mecklenburg County. In 1957, four black students embarked on a journey that changed the course of Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. You know, there's not much that's not known about my brother, Billy Graham. Um, he's preached to a lot of people in a lot of countries. But before he became really famous, he was just my brother, Billy Frank. In 1988, I was on the Charlotte Hornets when we played our first game. More than 23,000 fans swarmed into the Coliseum to see the new team play. The Hornets sold out 364 consecutive games at the Hive. And we gave you the chance to tell us your Mecklenburg County story on our website. Want to help shape the next 250 years? Join the conversation by visiting MecklenburgCountyNC.gov and click on Mech Connect. For Mecklenburg Matters, I'm Rosanna Sider. Thank you, Rosanna. It really was an historic year. Now, if you'd like to know what your county government is up to right now, the best place to find out is on the web at MecklenburgCountyNC.gov. You can find out about our new county manager, Dina DiOrio, and all the latest news about what your tax dollars are paying for. And you can give your input, too, by clicking on the Mech Connect button that's right on the front page. We really do want to hear from you. That's Mecklenburg Matters. Thank you for watching. I'm Suzanne Stevens. Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation isn't just great parks. Working out to stay fit. Hitting the greens. Exploring our county's nature preserves. Plan for the team. Or celebrating life's most important moments. It's all these things and more. Visit parkandrec.com to discover the adventures waiting for you through Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation. It's the natural place to be. Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne Stevens and this is Mecklenburg Matters. Do you remember the good old days when we used paper maps and had to ask strangers for directions? You know, it really wasn't that long ago. Now today we have Google Maps and iPhones so that we always know where we are and how to get to places. Well, the technology that makes it all possible is called GIS and your county uses it every day. In fact, they were a sponsor for GIS Day at Spirit Square and our Jeremy Mills navigated to there and tells us what GIS is all about. Welcome to GIS Day 2013 at Spirit Square. It is a celebration of sorts for the technology that affects you every day. This annual event serves as a showcase for geographic information systems. GIS is basically the uh, information and study of the land. It's all the data that goes into everything that we do uh, related to geography. GIS Day is an opportunity for schools, businesses, and the public to see the real-world applications of the technology that's changing our world. This helps the assessors every day uh, determine property values. It helps uh, uh, what we call 911 or uh, public safety, like police and medic. I think it's a good environment for kids to, to get to learn. Any way that we can work to help make information relevant, critical, viable, uh, you know, move technological literacy forward, you know, we're on board with uh, partnering with the county. This is an educational event to uh, exchange information and learn about how we use GIS technology in the region. For Mecklenburg Matters, I'm Jeremy Mills. Thank you, Jeremy.
Now, speaking of geography, you can find our geo portal in the quick links on the Mecklenburg County NC.gov website. All you do is type in your address and you will find a treasure trove of useful and very interesting information. Everything from who represents you in every elected office to environmental and tax information to where the closest libraries, parks, and recycling centers are. That's just some of the information that you can find on our excellent website. Again, the address, MecklenburgCountyNC.gov. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Suzanne Stevens. My name is Andrea Matias Lemoyne. So let's start with information sharing. I am a service coordinator at Mecklenburg County Children's Developmental Services. This is the local early intervention center and we provide support and services for families with children with um, special needs from birth to three. Well, I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I came to this country 12 years ago and I have been working for the county for seven years. Um, you know, I always knew that I wanted to make a difference in people's life and I think working for CDSA or Children's Developmental Services um, provide me with more opportunities than I thought. I like when I go to the family home, I like the interaction with the families and I guess for being an immigrant by myself, I completely understand their concerns and needs and I really look for resources for them. Lo que hacemos nosotros en el Consejo de Diversidad es proveer servicios e información a todas las agencias del Condado de Mecklenburg porque creemos que la diversidad nos hace mejor. I'm Suzanne Stevens and I welcome you to Mecklenburg Matters. Having a healthy workforce is important, not only for productivity, but also to keep medical expenses down. Mecklenburg County has a program for employees called My Total Health. And whether you are a Mecklenburg County employee or not, this video by Joe Travis will inspire you to start down the path to a healthier you. Take a look. My Total Health is the county initiative to promote wellness, awareness about health. The healthier we are in maintaining how we eat, how we um, care for our body as far as getting our wellness checks, biometric screening, um, making sure that we are healthy, it impacts us all. Because if we're healthy as a employer group, then our premiums won't be rising. Here we have sweet potatoes, apples, kale, greens, all things that are really nutrient dense, but again, they're grown in North Carolina. And a lot of times we forget about these foods that are here and are packed with so much nutrition. And if we can get them on our table in a healthier way, rather than with a ton of butter or a ton of sugar, a ton of oil or, and so forth, but with um, a healthier way. That's what we're trying to do today. Thank you. Well, the benefits of walking for me are that I'm more energized in the afternoon, in the evening, so I don't have that afternoon slump. I don't need caffeine. I just feel I'm you know, more alert to get some of the work done. It's a really nice break. It was nice to see that someone promotes it and wants people to actually stay fit, stay healthy. You know, it just makes you feel better and shows you, you know, how, how easy it is to just get out and take a couple of steps and how much of an effect it can have on your, your well-being.
Thank you, Joe. Hey, would you like to access your Mecklenburg County Health Department? A good place to start is on the web at mechhealth.org. You can see all of our services from A to Z. You can find a location near you, and you can also see a fee schedule for services, what it costs. Also, did you know that the health department does restaurant inspections? So you can check out a restaurant before you go. All right, that's Mecklenburg Matters. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Suzanne Stevens. My name is Famada Galloway. I think that would be helpful if I could observe. At Mecklenburg County Department of Social Services, I am an intake supervisor. My employees currently take applications for Work First, Medicaid, and the Food and Nutrition Services. I am actually born in um, Liberia, West Africa. I was born in Liberia, and when we left Liberia, we moved to Canada. My father was assigned to Canada as the ambassador, but when it was time for us to return to Liberia, the Civil War broke out and we could not go back. We sought asylum in Canada. The process we went through as a family that came from having so much to having very little inspired me to want to reach out to other families that might be going through some things where they maybe never had a lot, or maybe they at one time were able to provide for their family and then at a certain point they couldn't. So in college I decided I wanted to be someone that made a difference in the lives of others. Questions? What makes me the most proud about my job is the camaraderie we have, the staff, the management, the um, clients. Starting with my staff, I'm proud of the fact that they come into work every day, even though some of them may have things going on that are similar to what our clients have going on, they continue to come into work every day and also feel like they need to make an impact, a positive impact in somebody's life. Welcome everybody to Mecklenburg Matters. I'm Suzanne Stevens. Getting children, families, and communities to care about education is the goal, obviously, of every CMS school. Now, the Coalition for Albemarle Road Elementary School spells the acronym CARES, and at that school, family nights are an example of what happens when everyone cares. It's about learning. It's about helping. It's about fun. It's about family. Family nights at Albemarle Road Elementary School bring together students, parents, brothers and sisters to eat, play, and to learn new things that can help them both in the classroom and in life. Family nights are made possible by the Coalition for Albemarle Road Elementary School, also known as CARES which is a group of nonprofit and faith-based organizations committed to providing the school, its students, and their families with the resources they need to be successful. Every session of Family Night is unique, but some things are consistent. For example, each Family Night starts with a free hot meal. We have been really fortunate to have Queens University has a donated most of our food almost every night. We had maybe a couple of nights, I know, uh, Central Methodist uh, Church, they donated, they had a barbecue and they sent some barbecue down. Our church, the Messiah Lutheran, has done a hot dogs a couple of times, but most of the food comes from Queens University. The menu has included everything from turkey and pasta to fish and beef stew. Let's see, the pasta, see the hot dogs, almost everything was good, everything. Okay, we have First raffle is $25 gift card for Walmart. Dinner is followed by a raffle drawing in which a few families win gift cards and other prizes. This is really fun because um, they have a raffle and um, I didn't get a chance to win, but uh, I feel happy when other people 
you know, get, got the chance to win. Um, this is fun. There's something everyone can enjoy, even if what you enjoy is variety. The first club I went to was art, arts craft. Then I decided to go to the to science. Then I decided to go to soccer club. Then soccer club again. Then science. Then soccer club. All the clubs I went to were fun. And even though family nights take place at an elementary school, the programs are designed to benefit entire families, the parents as well as their students. Hands on Charlotte collaborated with Albemarle Royal Elementary School um, to come up with what we call family nights. Um, and what it is is to get family involvement, um, not just centered around the child alone or the parent alone, but the family as a unit. And I think one of the major reasons why we tried to do this family night was to also engage the parents because sometimes parents don't feel engaged with the school that their child goes to. So we want them to feel like they're included in the school, um, not just dropping their child off, but also maybe becoming more involved, whether it's in the PTA or volunteering their time for other school events. So every family night includes activities like English as a second language sessions, dance, cardio, and healthy living classes. The idea is not just to keep parents busy, but to build stronger families and a better elementary school. The families have like a time, you know, like to, be, to know their family better, to know what their hidden talents are and all of that, you know. Cares Night, that's it. It has made every single family I know that has gone here reunite more better. Yeah. You know, at Hands on Charlotte, we know very well how to identify, utilize, and nurture volunteers to be effective in a wide range of different um, service opportunities. A community, a neighborhood, a school family can use a lot of those same um, practices that we put into place, the knowledge that we have of different providers and um, different resources in the community, and they can really own that. So we see ourselves, yes, we're bringing in some volunteers to be able to run this programming here, but we really want to um, move towards the, um, the case where the volunteers, the volunteer leaders, our leadership of this program is coming to us from the families, from the neighborhood, from the school staff. Because if we want this to be sustainable for the long term, we have to empower people at the grassroots, and that's what our vision is. There is a proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. That's true. And with Family Nights from CARES, the goal is to build a strong, nurturing village in which teachers, parents, students, and the community work with each other for the benefit of all. Well, would you like to get involved with your county government? Go to MecklenburgCountyNC.gov and click on the MEC Connect button. This is our citizen involvement page and it allows you to connect to volunteer opportunities. You can apply to be on an advisory board. You can just share your ideas with the county if you'd like to. We really do sincerely want to hear from you. Thanks everybody for watching Mecklenburg Matters. I'm Suzanne Stevens. Olga Mazitz and I'm a bankruptcy specialist with Mecklenburg County Tax Office. Since it's a local case, maybe we can do it now. Uh, I have a lot of responsibilities. Uh, basically, our bankruptcy section is really small. It's just me and my co-worker. And we are responsible for any um, bankruptcy filings that we receive from the Western District of uh, North Carolina from court here in Charlotte. How can I help you today? Right. I do enjoy um, my uh, office environment and actually interacting with people, uh, whether uh, they are co-workers or customers. I was born in Belarus. My 
native language is Russian. We also have another language that it's not very popular in our country, but it's called Belarusian language. A lot of Eastern European languages are similar to each other, so I do understand Ukrainian and I can uh, read and write it. Well, English, is, I would say this is my second language, which I use at my work and, um, you know, with my friends. And then I do study Spanish, which um, hablo español un poquito. If I meet a Polish person, I can give up some you know, just uh, some type of conversation, maybe not very fluent and correct, but still I can um, keep up with it. I mean, if we would count all of them, there will be six, six languages. Recently, I won my um, um, singles uh, tennis tournament. USTA, United States Tennis Association, uh, ranked me 4.0 player. So considering that I've been playing really, really for two years, I feel like this is a really big achievement. <laughs> I really strive for not perfection, but to become a better person than I was yesterday. Maybe just a little bit. I'm very proud that I'm a part of Mecklenburg County and um, this is the best uh, workplace that anyone can have. Hello everyone, this is Mecklenburg Matters and I'm Suzanne Stevens. The North Carolina State Health Department requires local health departments to do a community health assessment every four years. Now the process begins with local data collection and then it continues with the creation of a dialogue with the community to get their input into what health issues should be listed as priorities in the county. Now the Mecklenburg County Health Department recently finished their priority setting event. Rick Christenberry has the story. The Mecklenburg County Health Department has completed an important phase in its 2013 Community Health Assessment with the conclusion of its priority setting exercise. The event was held October 25th at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. We worked really hard to be inclusive of the community and the diversity of the community and by looking around, I think we did a pretty good job. The one aspect that I really love about this community health assessment work is that we're not just looking at the performance of any one organization or program but we're actually looking at what the community needs are and also assessing the resources that we have in the community to tackle problems. As part of the assessment process, community members and individuals in the field of health care, education, business, and local government help to identify areas of greatest concern. One of our classes, we did a community health assessment, and you know, we have never really seen it before. We could just saw it on paper, so we never actually saw it in person. So just to see this, you know, community members from all walks of life, very diverse crowd getting together from, you know, different interest areas and um, deciding what is needed in the community. It's just amazing to see it in person. Items are prioritized using the following criteria. The magnitude of the problem, the severity of its impact, the presence of effective interventions, the degree of public concern and awareness, and the urgency of the problem. I think the one on chronic disease was probably the one that caught my attention. Uh, and one I like to have much discussion about because you're talking about three of the areas that affect primarily everyone uh, across the demographic. So I'm involved uh, community-wise and healthcare has always been my passion because I've always been in that area. So that's one of the reasons why I came here so I can take back this information to the community and to the churches, uh, the information. This year, access to care, chronic disease, mental health, and violence were ranked among the top four priorities. The community health assessment is required to receive state funding and to maintain an accredited status for the Mecklenburg County Health Department and serves as a valuable resource for health information and planning purposes. The full Community Health Assessment Report will be available in January and can be seen online at www.mechhealth.org. The assessment is followed by a planning process with action plans due to the state in June of 2014. Public health's emphasis on prevention accounts for most of the 30-year increase in life expectancy realized during the 20th century. For more information, visit www.mechhealth.org. Thank you, Rick.
Now, speaking of health, one of the best ways to stay healthy is to take advantage of our award-winning Park and Rec department. Just go to parkandrec.com, and that's where you can find rec centers and programs to help keep you fit. As a matter of fact, you can find many fitness centers with great equipment, and you can really save a lot of money over what commercial private gyms charge. Of course, the use of parks and greenways are free, and obviously a great way just to enjoy nature. All right, that's Mecklenburg Matters. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Suzanne Stevens. Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation isn't just great parks. Working out to stay fit. Hitting the greens. Exploring our county's nature preserves. Plan for the team. Or celebrating life's most important moments. It's all these things and more. Visit parkandrec.com to discover the adventures waiting for you through Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation. It's the natural place to be. Welcome right now to Mecklenburg Matters. I'm Suzanne Stevens. Statistics show it is a problem that is only getting worse. Several hundred homeless veterans are now living right here in the Charlotte area. For the past several years, Mecklenburg County has stepped up to offer the help they need. Jeremy Mills has the story. It's an opportunity for Mecklenburg County to give back to our military heroes. The annual Veterans Stand Down is intended to provide assistance to the hundreds of homeless veterans living in the area. It's a, a chance for the community to come out and, and show the veterans that we care about them and to show them all the services that are available. At the stand down, these veterans can receive counseling services, housing referral assistance, medical and dental care. And even a hot meal provided by the Marine Corps League. Well, our vets are important to us. The, the, evidently, there's not enough people taking care of them, so we're trying to help them out, take one day and treat them like they're human beings and feed them and, you know, just generally uh, show somebody cares. Uh, we're seeing a lot more families. We're seeing a lot more female veterans. And so uh, this year we've got a female uh, veteran area and we've tried to market a little bit toward uh, the female veterans. I feel good about helping these young women that are coming out because a lot of them have been in combat. Life going on and we're <laughs> in need of so much help. So, you know, I, I really appreciate it. This, it's such a big blessing. Army veteran Sherry Polk has been homeless for the past four years. There's a lot of us out there that really need help. And, you know, we're, we're not seen as the ordinary homeless person. This means a lot to me, uh, especially for the women vets. There's uh, so many programs for the men, but there's not as many for the women. Mecklenburg County loves our veterans and we try to take care of them. For Mecklenburg Matters, I'm Jeremy Mills. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. And thanks also to everyone who participated in the Vet Stand Down. Did you know that the county has a department that helps veterans navigate through the federal process to get the benefits they earned? Well, it's called Veterans Services, and you can find it, along with every other county department, on the web at mecklenburgcountync.gov. Just click on the Departments tab at the very top of the page. That's Mecklenburg Matters. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Suzanne Stevens.